What I wanted to show you today is something you can do in Google Earth where you can monitor real-time earthquakes. So you can load a file into Google Earth that will automatically update to show you the most recent earthquakes that are that are going on in real time. Essentially real time. It updates every five minutes, five to fifteen minutes or so. So first things first, you want to go to this website, earthquake.usgs.gov. It's the United States Geologic Survey puts this out. Slash learn slash kml.php. Once you're at this website, first off, if you don't have Google Earth, there's a link here so you could download it, if that's helpful to you. Uh, so if you don't have it, you won't be able to do this activity, so you'll want to download it onto your computer if you can. So go ahead and download it, and once you're ready, then we'll move ahead. So I want to look at some of the other features that are on this page. There's some pretty cool things. Like I said, we're going to focus on the real-time earthquakes. One other thing I wanted to point out, um, well, all of these are interesting, but the tectonic plate boundaries, you could put that into Google Earth, so you can see where all the tectonic plate boundaries are and what type of boundary they are, labeled by color. So anyway, there's, there's some really good things on here. But we're going to focus on the real-time earthquakes. So mostly what's on this page here, the, the majority of the text is just description. So if you want to learn more about KML file types, which is what you use to bring information into Google Earth, and read more about this. Uh, it'll tell you about how to how to work the scroll bar for the earthquake animations that you can download. But the most important information is right here in the on the right side of the page. So we're going to look at automatic feeds, but there's also static feeds. The difference is automatic feeds will update automatically. So every five minutes or every fifteen minutes, depending on which option you choose, it's just going to update the database in Google Earth. But static feeds do not auto-update. So this gives you the option of keeping the data as you wanted it for a certain day. So you could download it for that day, but it won't change unless you want it to change. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and download the past 30 days, because the past 7 days may not give us enough information to look at. So I'm going to go colored by depth, because I, I think that's a good thing to look at. So if you click on colored by depth, it should download your file type. Just keep in mind what the name is so you'll be able to find it. Then open Google Earth. And let's start up in uh, North America here. Let's we'll start looking at some earthquakes here. But first we need to get the file in so that we are able to work with it. So the first thing you do, it's really easy. You just go to File, Open. And then you find your file. So if it's in the Downloads folder, get it from there. Or if you saved it somewhere else, Find it from there, and then click open or double click it, and you'll notice some dots appear. Especially over here on the coast of California, there's a whole cluster over here in Oklahoma. And that's an interesting thing recently because a lot of people are attributing that to hydraulic fracturing related to oil and gas production that's going on significantly around this and around that area. So some, some uh, pretty good evidence about fracking creating earthquakes but that's a topic for another day. But anyway, you can see the, the orange dots are related to earthquakes. So the reason they're all orange here is because they occur at a depth from 0 to 33 kilometers. So they're pretty shallow earthquakes. If you have deep earthquakes, they'll be a different color. And the magnitude of the earthquake is represented by the size of the circle. So the bigger the circle, the stronger the earthquake. So hopefully that helps you discern this map a little bit. So let's move from... North America and let's go down to South America off the coast of Chile and into Argentina a bit. So I want you to notice a pattern here. So you remember what the colors represent. So the orange is the most shallow, the red is the deepest. So what do you notice as you go from the coast inland? So I want you to think about that pattern here. Your earthquakes are more shallow near the coast and as you go inland they're deeper. So I want you to think about why that might be specifically considering the tectonic boundary environment. And if you want to know what type of tectonic boundary this is, probably a good idea to download that other feature that I showed you, the tectonic plate boundaries. So you can download that and take a look. See if you can figure out why that the earthquakes would be shallower on the west coast and then get deeper as you go inland. 